Howdy, it's Webcam Parrot here to talk about the God Emperor of Mankind from all different types of sources. I'll be going over every single one of his abilities and notable feats drawn from over 45 different sources. A galactic conqueror and scientific genius, the God Emperor of Mankind has been confirmed to be the strongest human of all time, and first and greatest of all human psychers. And as such, should have access to every regular psychic ability available to humans, if not on a far higher level, or should at least be able to produce something similar. Even after being betrayed and reduced to nothing but a barely alive corpse, the Emperor is still the strongest power in the Imperium and lost nothing of his strength, maybe even growing in strength thanks to the religion that formed around him. Which presents us with an immense scope of power, and so I'll try to go over as many of these psycho abilities as I can from various rulebooks. For instance, an ability called Terrifying Visions which fills his enemies' minds with nightmarish images and visions of torment which can cause them to flee in terror. Or Misfortune, a power that takes hold of fate itself, allowing the Emperor and his allies to automatically strike at the weakest points in their enemy's armor. Enfeeble and Life Leech would allow him to coat his victims in warp energy, sucking their very life force and soul out of their bodies to heal himself or his allies. Fiery Form transforms him into an incandescent being of living warp fire, preventing physical attacks from touching him at all, instead passing through him harmlessly, and also making all of his fire-based attacks much stronger as a result. Spectral Blade, a Raven Guard special, is particularly strange, as instead of directly improving the Psyker's own strength, it instead implants a suggestion of having an irresistibly sharp blade into their opponent's heads, effectively turning their own soul and belief energy against them, making the blade actually irresistibly sharp to them, bypassing their physical and spiritual durability entirely. Rack and Ruin allows the caster to see and exploit every fault or fracture within a structure and attack it perfectly to bring it to the ground which isn't very impressive, but when combined with Fortify, an ability that requires the caster to envision his allies as fortifications in order to heal them, it could be used to literally manifest, create, and then exploit weaknesses within your opponent. Definitely something that the Emperor should be capable of. Like, imagine you are fighting the Emperor, and he just imagines that you have a broken, weakened leg, and so you actually do and then thousands of psychic attacks rain down exactly where your leg is at its most weak simultaneously. That's just something that he can do whenever he decides to think about it. Additionally, a basic ability, known simply as Force, is set to transform a weapon from a normal one into one that can bend reality. Psychic Shackles invades the mind of the Psyker's opponent and crushes their will to fight forcing them to abandon it, or blood boil, which causes the target's lifeblood to churn into a seething frenzy, eventually bursting from their veins and pours explosively. Gate of Infinity punches a corridor through the warp, allowing the Psyker to cross great distances in the blink of an eye, and Vortex of Doom, a similar ability that instead creates a hole directly into the warp, sucking anything nearby in, condemning them to total oblivion. Ghostly Bonds is an ability that directly manipulates the connections between the material world and Immaterium, manipulating space itself, giving it bulges and wrinkles that make it harder to traverse. Purge Soul can cleanse its target of all vestiges of whatever the caster considers to be evil, which, in like the mechanics of the game, is basically just a battle of willpower that kills you. So I guess the way it works is just that the Grey Knight or whoever is using this ability just thinks that anything trying to fight him at all is automatically evil, which I think is pretty funny. Dark Excommunication severs a demon's connection to its master, effectively removing any special powers that someone may have been gifted by a demon or anything like that, and is effectively a counter to almost any Psyche ability provided you are strong enough and the Emperor is plenty strong. 
Compel is a mind control ability that forces its target to do whatever the user wants them to do, even taking their own life if the psyker is strong enough. Delude clouds its victim's perception, tricking them into believing the psyker is someone to be trusted implicitly amongst other effects. The infamous and terrifying psychic scream is a way of unleashed psychic force that resonates in the target's mind, causing great pain or even tearing the victim's soul directly out of their body, a cry that is felt rather than heard. Psychic stench literally makes something obnoxiously and extremely stinky for up to 10 days, and it's just like whatever you personally think smells the worst which I think is a pretty horrible thing to do to someone if you just use it on their hair or something. It even works on things that have an impaired sense of smell or never had a sense of smell at all. Chameleon, as the name suggests, can allow you to camouflage and blend into the surrounding environment, making you harder to spot, and Deja Vu can implant a memory loop into the target's mind, forcing them to repeat whatever they were just doing like diving for cover from the same grenade that just exploded, or shooting into thin air at a location where a target was previously. Distort vision makes you appear to be standing 10 meters away from where you really are, effectively making you completely invisible even to sensory equipment. Forget me literally erases all memories the target has of you, and they won't be able to create any new ones whilst it is active either. Knack and Lucky effectively just make you better at anything you want or simply lucky enough to succeed at them, presenting another type of fate manipulation. Another ability, Precognition, is pretty intuitively named and allows the user to peer into the future to see what will happen next. And in the hands of someone like the Emperor, it can span galaxies and millennia with precision. Resist possession, of course, resist possession from things like ghosts but also warp demons or anything of the sort, making it effectively outerversal protection from possession, as many of these abilities already are. Trick is an example of probability manipulation, making unfavorable odds better for you and already good odds practically guaranteed. White noise protects against psyche or technological detection, or scrying, also implying that these are the kinds of abilities that psychers like the Emperor can use. And all of those I just talked about are considered minor powers. Specific schools, like Biomancy, present specialities within psycher powers. Within Biomancy, we have the following. Cellular control, an ability that presents an insane control of a psyker's own body allowing them to transcend the limitations of their physical bodies, making them immune to things like fatigue, vacuums, extreme temperatures, or poisons, and vastly improves their physical ability in practically every area. Constrict is like the classic force choke concept, except that instead of actually being choked by some sort of physical effect, it just commands your body to close its windpipe and it's forced to obey. Regenerate and seal wounds, also of biological effect, can rapidly repair practically any non-fatal damage and heal potentially life-threatening wounds. But the Emperor actually has his own version of this ability, and we'll talk about it later, that is considerably stronger than both of these. Shape Flesh presents further ways to push this biological boundary, literally growing wings, natural armor, night vision, claws, or the ability to burrow through the ground, among many other forms. It's described as the point where flesh and will become indistinguishable. The next school, Divination, is open to powers like Divine Shot, which is described as allowing the user to make near-impossible ranged shots by casting your psychic gaze into the warp down the near-infinite paths of future potential categories until you found the future that you want, and that once it's done, the attack cannot be avoided in any way, as it is destined to occur. And this effect can be applied and replicated in numerous other areas, as seen with a huge number of abilities in this field, like Farsight, Glimpse, Preternatural Awareness, Precognitive Strike, and Dodge. 
SoulSight offers a look into an individual's history, thoughts, and habits with a mere glance by reading the trace of their aura projected in the materium. Pyromancy, which I've talked about a little bit already, offers, notably, Incinerate, a power that creates immense heat, not through the production of fire, but instead the agitation of molecules within the body of the target, effectively representing a type of matter manipulation open to psychers that turns the inside of their opponents into molten lava. And the gruesomely named Holocaust, an ability based on the Emperor's far more advanced Final Strike to Horus, that completely annihilates not just the physical body of the target, but also their soul and mind. Even demons projected down into the Materium are killed permanently this way, and there is simply no coming back from this, even with the intervention of powerful, high outerversal entities like the Chaos Gods. Which for context, is like setting fire to someone's hologram, and then the real person being completely incinerated to never return anyway. Horus witnessed the use of this ability against the head orcs of the Wa of Ulanor on Goro, the strongest orc we had ever seen in any story, along with all of his strongest companions and allies. He describes it in the following way. Now you die, said the Emperor, and ripped his blade up. It was an awful, agonizing mortal wound. Electrical fire vented from hideous metal organs within the wreckage of the Greenskin's body. It was a murderous wound that not even a beast of such unimaginable proportions could take and live. Yet, that was not the worst of it. Horus felt the build-up of colossal psychic energies and shielded his eyes as a furious light built within the Emperor. Power like nothing he had ever seen his father wield or even suspected he possessed. All-consuming, all-powerful, it was the power to extinguish life in every sphere of its existence. Physical flesh turned to ash before it, and what ancient faiths had once called a soul was burned out of existence, never to cohere again. Nothing would remain of he who suffered such a fate. Their body and soul would pass from the finite energy of the universe to fade into memory, and have all that they were wiped from the canvas of existence. This was as complete a death as it was possible to suffer. That power blazed along the Emperor's sword, filling the green skin with killing light. It erupted in a bellowing golden explosion, and lightning blazed from the coruscating afterimage of its death, arcing from orc to orc as it sought out all those who were kin to the master of Goro. Unimaginable energies poured from the Emperor, reaching throughout the entirety of the chamber and burning every last shred of alien flesh to a mist of drifting golden ash. Horus watched as the power of life and death coursed through the Emperor, saw him swell in stature until he was like unto a god, wreathed in placid amber flames towering and majestic. His father never claimed to be a god and refuted such notions with a vengeance. He had even castigated a son for believing what Horus now saw before him with his very own eyes. Pretty intense. By the way, if you ever see someone saying the Emperor is weak because he struggled with an Orc war boss one time, this is the scene that they are talking about. And no, they have never read it. They just like pretending to have read it for some reason. Like every single Orc, even remotely allied with this Orc across the whole planet, who again, is probably the strongest Orc to have ever lived, were all killed in this way. They were all wiped from the planet entirely with one attack. Much later, after Horus had betrayed the Emperor, and was not only far beyond his former power, but also bolstered by the might of all four Chaos Gods, would suffer a similar fate. Initially, in their fight, the Emperor holds back, believing that his son Horus can be redeemed. But after the death of one of his servants, this happens. Mustering every iota of his concentration, he focused his psychic might into a bolt of pure force, more coherent than a laser, more destructive than an exploding sun. He hurled the bolt at Horus, a lance of power destined for the madman's heart. Horus sensed the upsurge of energy and turned to face the Emperor, 
his look of surprise turning to one of horror as he realized the strength of the attack and the doom it brought. The Emperor's psychic bolt struck the War Master. Horus screamed as destruction rained down on him. He twisted and writhed in titanic agony. He strove frantically to counter the Emperor's death blow, but his struggles became ever more feeble as the lethal energies played over him. Driven by all the force of his rage and pain and hatred, the Emperor willed Horus's death. He sensed the forces of chaos retreat, disengaging themselves from their pawn. As they did so, sanity returned to the War Master. The Emperor saw the realization of the atrocities he had committed flicker across Horus's face. Tears glistened there. Through the torrent of the Emperor's psychic assault, Horus hailed to pain and remorse. He painfully uttered his last words. I have been a fool. I was so wrong. Everything is ruined. I have betrayed you, my father. I do not ask for forgiveness. End my torment. Kill me now. I am too weak to resist them. They call to me. Please end this. Horus was free, but the Emperor knew he himself was dying, and that the powers of chaos might once again possess the War Master, and that he would not be able to stop them a second time. It was too great a risk. Horus must die. Yet for a brief moment, looking into his old friend's face, he hesitated, unable to do the deed. Then the thought of the slaughter that still went on outside, that might go on forever, resolved, hardened within him. He forced all mercy and all compassion from his mind, emptied it of all knowledge of friendship, of camaraderie and love. His eyes locked with Horus and saw understanding there. Then, with full cold knowledge of what he was doing, the Emperor destroyed the War Master. It was later remarked that Horus was completely and utterly dead forever, beyond the abilities of even the gods to restore, and wiped from the warp entirely. This is as owned as it gets. You are dead. No second chances, no opportunity to resist. Do not pass a go, do not collect $200. I've unfriended you on Facebook and I spelt your name wrong on your tombstone. Moving on to the next school, Telekinetics, which mostly offers, you know, typically telekinetic powers like being able to crush people to death or moving objects with your mind. But notably in this discipline is Psychic Blade, which produces a blade of psychic force a single molecule thick that can easily cut through even the toughest armors. Telepathy is a school governing the contact and control of other minds that I have covered somewhat already. But worth mentioning is See Me Not, a type of invisibility that works by instead erasing your presence from the mind of the enemy, preventing them from perceiving you at all in any way. Mind Scan gives us an example of the truly full range of mind delving capabilities available to a psyker, allowing them to explore all regions of the mind from surface thoughts and short term memory to the subconscious and the bare soul itself. A Dark Angel's version of this ability is described as borrowing your consciousness into the screaming victim's brain, ripping free their secrets in a spray of gore, which is incredibly metal. Whilst, just as devastatingly, Mind Wipe scourges the mind of its target, dragging out every memory that makes them who they are, and reducing them to hollow shells of what they once were. Pre-morphic resonance, which could fit into any number of schools, is similar to many of the fate-related abilities mentioned earlier, allowing the user to peer into the timeless eddies of the warp, seeing future echoes of whatever movements the enemy will make before giving this knowledge to his allies, basically allowing an entire group of people to see into the future. Neural Void assails the target with a void of blackness upon the victim's minds, breaking down all mental cohesion, with orders becoming garbled and impetus blunted. Veil of Time gives the Psyche the power to control time directly, altering the temporal flow to sway the tide of battle. Tenebrous Curse turns the shadows of the opponent into living creatures that pull them to the ground, tearing them apart and leaving them vulnerable. Now important to mention is that all of these abilities, with sufficient skill, can be used down to an incredibly precise and microscopic level, making it almost impossible to even know that you are under the effects of them in some cases. 
like with this Psyker here, who was able to bond to a number of different creatures through marks that were this small. Additionally, both Null Zone and To Deny the Witch show that all of the abilities I just talked about, from soul manipulation, to biological transformation, to erasure, to mind reading, to teleportation, can be countered by another sufficiently powerful Psyker. With Null Zone, stripping away all defenses, technological and mystical, and deny the witch straight up just saying no to any of these powers and preventing them outright, provided, once again, that you are strong enough to stop them. The Emperor is basically the strongest Psyker ever, and regularly competes with high Outerversal gods on this account, making his full arsenal incredibly potent and simultaneously stripping his opponent of any similar abilities to his own. Additionally, Calexus Assassins, or the Sisters of Silence, which are powerful Psyker nullifying elite agents, have trouble even nullifying Alpha Plus rated Psykers like Magnus, that the Emperor is far, far beyond. So he is used to overpowering and dealing with beings that are just considered to not even have a mind or presence in the warp at all, effectively bypassing what would otherwise be considered immunity to his powers. Malkador the Sigillet notes that there are certain permanent benefits that come physically from just living as a Psyker for a time. He says that every molecule of his being was changed forever by it, making him near ageless and unkillable by conventional means, even without his powers anymore. That he had long ago fell beyond the scope of humanity. The Emperor is so extremely beyond Malkador that even as a corpse strapped to the Golden Throne, he has been able to power the Astronomicon and prevent a warped rift for 10,000 years that turned Malkador to dust in only hours or days, even whilst doing other things around the galaxy, and likely has a form of inherent immortality far beyond Malkador, even without any of his Psyche powers. Obviously, more or less every ability that the Emperor possesses is in some way Psyche based but not all of them are documented and accessible to regular psychers in this way, so I'll go over more specific instances of the Emperor's psychic talents later, although I talked about them a little bit already. For now, I want to talk about the Emperor's actual ability to destroy things. Now, Malkador, who we just spoke of, was capable of teleporting the entire moon of Titan away into the warp to protect the Grey Knights, as well as shielding them entirely from detection. Titan is nearly twice the mass of Earth's moon, and if we take the prior time frame seriously, the Emperor is at least millions of times more powerful than Malkador, putting him into the large planetary levels of power, or about 4.13 times 10 to the 35th power joules. However, it's noted that the warp rift that Malkador died trying to keep open actually makes powering the Astronomicon look trivial and the Astronomicon itself is a galaxy-wide beacon spanning across most of the Imperium and countless solar systems, putting it closer to multi-solar system levels of power. Accounting for the same difference between Malkador and the Emperor gives us the low end of 10 to the 60th power joules of energy. Of course, as we already saw in his fight with Horus, that the Emperor, even extremely weakened and near death, is capable of slinging out to God-denying psychic bolts that were more destructive than an exploding sun. So this level of strength isn't surprising. On top of this, a pretty unremarkable greater demon of Zinch, far weaker than the Emperor, was able to move an entire cluster of stars around without any problems. And another demon, Matile the Undivided, created a fortress billions of miles wide and millions of miles tall, as well as the Necrosphere, a dome of bones, enclosing an entire solar system, only to eventually be killed by the Emperor's son, Sanguinius, who is much weaker than his father. Less impressively, during the battle on Goro with the Orcs I mentioned earlier, a huge power generator that was loaded with Orc Wa energy was on the verge of exploding, and had to be thrown fully into the warp, temporarily, by the Emperor, only to, upon its return, destroy the planet as surely as if it had fallen into the grip of a black hole. 
This is relevant because the energy that went into the generator literally comes from the thoughts, beliefs, and psychic energy of the orcs that the Emperor just completely overpowered and annihilated utterly with his own psychic powers. Even alpha level psychers, which are again far below the Emperor, can unwittingly destroy entire worlds. Additionally, it's highly likely that the Storm of the Emperor's Wrath, a vast warp rift that completely engulfs the Klax system, as well as encroaching on several other star systems, was created by the Emperor in a moment of rage at Goj Van Dyer, even as he sat as a corpse on the Golden Throne. However, all of this is peanuts, because the vast majority of the Emperor's power is at any one time devoted to preventing the spread and strength of the Chaos Gods throughout the universe via the warp. Whilst he is not as strong as these gods, he does compete with them, as we saw earlier with the destruction of his son Horus. And so everything that I talked about in my How Big Is The Warp video is applicable here, making the Emperor far beyond a multiversal powerhouse, or something like that, and into outerversal territories. I recommend checking out that video if you're interested in that sort of thing. Without the need of the Emperor to blockade the Immaterium like this, along with certain pieces of Necron tech doing the same, all Psychers would have power on this level whilst they were in the universe, but as it stands, they only become this strong outside of his influence in the deeper parts of the warp. Obviously within this fully realized level of power, speed barely applies to the Emperor at all, as the distance over time formula doesn't make any sense in the warp, or the Emperor's warp self, which lacks a distance or time entirely. But how fast could we say he was if we wanted to handicap him to also having to fend off the forces of chaos, and his partial separation of the warp from the universe as a whole? Well, when a normal space marine took hold of the Spear of Telesto, a weapon that held a tiny fraction of the power of Sanguinius, he was able to move so fast that lasers looked as if they were suspended in the air, making him at least thousands of times faster than light if we assume that they were actually moving so slowly that he couldn't tell that they were, but it could be even faster than this, of course. Araman, a Chaos Sorcerer of some power, before he even became the powerhouse he was today, was fast enough to see the impact of defense lasers in only trillionth of a second, also putting him in this range of speed. Both of these feats were performed without the use of specific Psyker powers that can vastly improve their user's speed as well. A young Eldrad, who was a Psyker and Eldar Farseer, was able to project himself tens of thousands of light years from the craft world on Ulthway to McCrag in only a few moments, also stopping time everywhere around him as he did so, which is a pretty casual feat for him and definitely something that the Emperor could replicate. Magnus also famously projected himself across the galaxy from Prospero to Terra in only a few moments and was clearly able to wield his psychic powers even after doing this. Both of these feats are comparable and work out to at least 315 billion times the speed of light, and are extremely casually performed by two characters vastly weaker than even this weakened Emperor that we are talking about. Mephiston, another human psyker, displayed the ability to use his psychic powers to shift beyond the run of time, granting him incredible speed to fight a pack of demons, and Araman was also immediately able to use his precognition and supernatural speed to avoid an attack that was already coming for him. Again, both things definitely applicable to the Emperor. I've talked several times already about the Primarchs, the sons of the Emperor, and beings that were created and granted all of their powers by him. Additionally, Russ would refer to them as merely extensions of the Emperor and his power, and so all of the abilities that they possess should also be something that the Emperor is capable of. The most famous of these is Vulcan's nature as a perpetual, granting him virtually eternal life and extreme levels of regeneration and resurrection. Fully killing a perpetual is virtually impossible, and in fact 206 of the 500 facts for 500 stores, we were directly told that the Emperor is a perpetual and functionally immortal. 
considering this is considered a special ability beyond even what is normally capable of psychers, it should be far greater than what can already be accomplished by them, and can even return someone who has died to life again. This isn't all too surprising, considering we've seen the Emperor grant others this immortality as well. For instance, the Guardian of the Void Dragon, who then passed it on to Dahlia, or the Saints like Celestine that have been resurrected many times by his powers. Corvus Corex, another Primarch, is considered to be at home with the Shadows, and can meld or blend into Shadows as well as performing strange Shadow Shaping abilities. Conrad Curse can turn completely invisible if he wants to. Rogel Dawn was granted the power of supernatural persuasion, and Sanguinius was born with wings that allow him to fly. Alpharis can blend into crowds, slipping from notice, and impersonate others nearly perfectly, excluding Lionel Johnson's supernatural senses, who Alpharis thinks is the stealthiest of the three. Of course, Magnus and Lorgar also inherited their psyker powers from the Emperor, and Magnus seems to have a shape-changing ability that he inherited from the Emperor as well, that shouldn't be too different from the Psyker abilities I talked about earlier. Jagatai Khan is supernaturally fast even compared to the other Primarchs, and can accelerate himself into a state called Alec Geth, a speed considered so fast that thought could kill, where distance between intention and action is made nothing and where vengeance is a living thing with both extension and eminence. It's considered a perfect fighting style, scraping the boundaries of both the divine and the diabolic, and allowed the Khan to fight an entire warband of orcs, killing all of them without them even landing a single blow on him. Uh, Gilliman presumably inherited being a giant nerd from the Emperor or something, and Perturabo is uniquely gifted when it comes to creating technology or architecture. The Primarch Sickle Rick can absorb the energy or life force from things, empowering himself in the process, and on one occasion was seen even absorbing the physical attacks of others, rendering them completely impotent against him. And Angron has a special empathic ability, allowing him to feel the emotion and pain of others, as well as absorbing or displacing it, which he used to help someone who was gravely injured. Uh, Fulgrim is just super pretty, I guess, I don't really know what his deal is. Same with Horus, he presumably has some kind of special ability, but it's unclear what it is. Of course, the Emperor isn't just strength and power, he is incredibly devious and intelligent as well. From his creation of Thunder Warriors and Space Marines, master creations of technology and biological manipulation, to the creation of the Imperial Webway, an outerversal structure that would have been used to safely traverse the universe and the warp. Also, the creation of the Astronomicon and various other pieces of tech that would not be improved upon by Imperial scientists for 10,000 years or more. Even regular space marines can look at an ore spec scanner and understand in moments the details of an entire planetary invasion, down to minute details, and the Emperor is effectively the smartest human to have ever lived without a doubt. Jerissian, the master of the forge of the Black Templars, was able to crack into a code more complex than mapping every particle within a star in only a week, which he did with his own brain something that would take the combined efforts of every single computer in the world today beyond trillions of years to compute. Along with his 48,000 years of experience, the Emperor is doubtless a super genius of extreme proportions, and an expert in practically every field imaginable. The Emperor also has some special equipment created by himself that grants him certain abilities. Most notable of these is his sword, often just referred to as the Sword of the Emperor. A famously powerful relic blade, the sword is bathed in psychic flames, and just drawing the sword fills those around it with the presence of the Emperor. It can permanently kill demons even through their avatars, which are otherwise immortal and reside outside the physical, within the warp, something I have talked about before in this video. If planted into the ground, it can produce a protective shield of warp energy, as well, that will destroy enemies that come near it. His armor, known as the One True Armor, is a master-crafted suit of Terminator armor, and was taken apart after his death, 
with a small piece being given to every Terminator. Even this small piece is sufficient to give them a protective holy field. There are even statements from Keldor Drago for these small fragments having the potential to permanently kill demons, although it was never, as far as I know, actually done. Presumably his special Lightning Claw and Mastercrafted Stormbolter have their own unique qualities too, but they have yet to be revealed. And although he doesn't wield them personally, he did create two metaphysical blades. Lehman Russ's weird Dionysian spear, which drained Horus of his chaos magic, and Valdor's Apollyon spear. On top of these are several powerful abilities used by the Primarch Magnus through his psychic powers that the Emperor should also be capable of using as well. For instance, Magnus was able to reduce his opponents to atoms, and his very presence is said to be anathema to logic. Even to look upon him is to surrender all sanity, and when he looks back, destruction manifests in great measure, and can transmute his enemies into mewling chaos spawn with ease. In another instance, Magnus was able to casually wipe out an entire battlefield with nothing but his breath, strangling everyone there to death. But what about the Emperor's unique abilities? Things that only he can do. Well, for starters, he made the entire Word Bearers Legion, that's 100,000 people, kneel with nothing but his presence, and on another occasion, psychically overpowered both Araman and Magnus, two of the strongest psychists to have ever lived, and a huge chunk of the Thousand Suns Legion, a legion of space marines that specialize in psychic powers simultaneously. Although this isn't particularly impressive, really, considering other weaker psychers have been able to take control of the minds of entire planets before. The Empress Precognition, on the other hand, is so immense that he was able to anticipate an incredibly hyper-specific situation regarding the tech priest Belisarius' call that wouldn't happen for over 10,000 years. We've talked about him healing, resurrecting, or granting immortality to biological or conceptual entities, but the Emperor can also easily fully repair machinery as well. However, the ability that he seems to resort to the most against particularly tough opponents, or those that he would struggle to kill, or may not want to kill for whatever reason, is sealing. Against Drachnian, an immensely powerful demonic entity that represents all murders, a being that the Emperor could not destroy because of its intimate connection to the history of humanity and his own past. Whilst it's possible that he could have simply destroyed a Drachnian, it would have irrevocably changed not only himself, but the entire human race, perhaps wiping them out entirely. It's also possible that as a being of living murder, attempting to murder Drachnian would only have made it more powerful. Instead, the Emperor transforms the demon into a sword and casts it into the warp, leaving it trapped there and sealed within the sword that he had just made. In a similar situation against the Void Dragon, the most powerful of the Catan, which are fundamental aspects of the universe incarnate that are nearly impossible to destroy, he threw the beast all the way from Earth to Mars, sealing it there to spur the technological revolution of the Cult of Machines. In this case, it's confirmed that he could have chosen to destroy the Void Dragon, however the repercussions for the rest of the universe could have been catastrophic and by leaving it beneath Mars, he strengthened the Imperium of Man further, thanks to the improvements in technology that it gave them. He can also summon an entire army of his dead servants, including the Primarch Ferris Manus, into a force known as the Legion of the Damned, a giant organization composed of the spirits of long-dead space marines. Even as a long-dead corpse, even though he had been sitting on the Golden Throne for 10,000 years, powering the Astronomicon which lights up the entire galaxy, and keeping a portal closed to Hell against the powers of four different gods, just choosing to speak, just deciding to say any words at all, completely erased the concept of time entirely from the universe whilst he was speaking. That is the casual mastery of time that the Emperor is capable of. Anyway, that's it for the video. 
There were almost certainly powers that the Emperor has that I didn't talk about in this video because there's just such a massive volume of information to go through, but I've included as much as I could find in this video, and I think I got all of the interesting parts at the very least. A big thank you to my friend Hashi, who goes by Alpharius Omegon on Twitter. Uh, go follow him and, and give him a look if you enjoyed the video. In any case, I will see you all in the next one.